Okay. So uh, all the authors, uh, uh, I'm, uh, by the way, I'm a Berbenvinist, and uh, the other authors are also in the room. Uh, I must apologize, uh, I did not pay attention that I was supposed to, to speak in English. So I can, that's not a problem, but some of the slides are in French. Okay, so first of all, uh, the platform I'm going to present uh, has been designed for uh, this strange beast. So it's an excellent center called uh, Common Labs. And it's a group of about 10 uh, labs uh, scattered through Brittany and Nantes and in quite diverse uh, scientific area. Okay, and of course, one of the challenges is to bring these people working together, and uh, that's uh, one of the motivations for developing the platform. So to give you a brief overview of what Common Labs is, so it's uh, an excellent center, LabEx in French. So uh, this is the, the group of uh, entities uh, that are involved in the, uh, this excellent center. You have the information regarding the funding and uh, <coughs> And uh, the main point I want to stress today is that uh, we have uh, one particular way of uh, supporting research uh, through projects, except that projects are not run the way funding agencies uh, run projects usually. So it's not just uh, launching a call, waiting for answers, uh, selecting, providing money, and forg forgetting all the rest. Uh, so we are really involved in the uh, preparation and the creation of uh, cross-fertilization between the people. And uh, we are involved also in the seeding of the projects, and we are involved in the following of the projects. So it's quite a different way of managing. So. Uh, uh, being uh, such a virtual lab, we, we do have a website, and uh, I'm, uh, I think since we are late, I'm not going to browse it. Uh, so it has a, a public side, which is uh, fairly classic, but it's quite uh, well documented. And uh, one uh, important point is that we do not have uh, specific activity reports, but uh, the website itself is the only activity report of uh, of the excellent center. So we, in addition, of course, we do have a collaborative platform and it consists of uh, a collection of private uh, sites for each project with the classical uh, collaborative services, uh, which are briefly listed there. And uh, together with uh, some more advanced services that uh, are precisely the purpose of uh, this presentation. Okay, so what's the motivation for going beyond the classical uh, collaborative uh, services? The first point is that uh, we do have a, a wide scope uh, in terms of uh, scientific area. And uh, at the moment, uh, I think we have uh, 15 or 20 projects. I don't remember exactly. By the way, I'm not the director anymore. I was uh, the co-founder of the LabEx, but uh, I resigned. So I, I mean, uh, there, there are new directors at the moment, but I'm still running the platform project. Uh, so uh, one of the difficulty was to have uh, research activity bringing together people who never considered working together before. So for instance, um, uh, we have uh, computer scientists involved in uh, uh, ambient intelligence application. And uh, these people are now working with uh, uh, people in electronics designing antenna. And they have a research project on RFID systems for, uh, I mean, uh, more adaptive use than the current industrial use. So that's a good example of uh, people uh, working together that were not used to work together. And I'm not sure that uh, 
the existing uh, funding programs, be them French or European, would be keen at supporting this kind of activity. We also have uh, quite theoretical computer scientists, uh, expert in uh, workflow modeling, who is working with uh, people from the uh, laboratory of the French NIH in CERM, together also with a hospital in uh, modeling the workflow of uh, surgery uh, teams with the aim of helping for teaching uh, nurses to uh, help for such uh, surgeries. So these are the kind of uh, projects which were not at all expected before uh, we started the lab and which, are, which we are most proud of. And uh, <coughs> of course, uh, one of the difficulties is how do you achieve having such people uh, talking together and building projects together. So far, it has largely been uh, in the hands of the board of directors of the lab, but uh, we would like this to become more spontaneous, more bottom up and more distributed. And this is why uh, the finding of competencies in such a distributed lab is uh, becoming uh, for us an important issue. So that was our first and primary motivation. I think this is a kind of motivation that you easily find if in large uh, industries or in similar consortia, be it uh, public or not. Uh, another point is uh, activity reports, uh, which are typically uh, uh, considered a burden for the colleagues and uh, with good reasons. I mean, uh, they get uh, lots of uh, uh, government institutions that are behind their research teams. Uh, for instance, here I think we have three or four of them. And at least uh, uh, for us, uh, CNRS and INRIA and IRS uh, are three bodies who are asking for activity reports. And therefore, providing activity reports in general is considered uh, additional heavy duty. And uh, when you have to do it in addition for extra uh, uh, bodies such as uh, labs or even European project, I mean, uh, uh, network of excellence project in Europe are typically generating a lot of activity research uh, uh, duties. So this is something that we would like to to be to to help for and make uh, easier. Uh, another issue is uh, the follow up of uh, the research activities that we have been funding. So again, this is not something that uh, usually uh, is done so much by funding programs, but we do want to do this because we believe that by following the projects, we can helping them to improve and to have an impact after they die. So uh, to, to being able to do this without putting too much burden again on the shoulders of the participants, uh, we would like to get helped by the collaborative platform. And so there are another there are several other uh, objectives similar for which uh, we would like to have help from a collaborative platform. And of course, uh, our main objective is that uh, uh, I would say, for instance, in contrast of uh, the trend from agencies or even from portals such as HAL, that is the French portal for collecting uh, publications, uh, I mean, these are typically uh, entities uh, which are uh, putting lots of uh, burden on the shoulder of researchers by asking them to fill uh, more and more database. And I think this is uh, becoming a difficulty. And the question is, is it possible to create uh, information, scientific information stores without uh, asking the people to fill databases. So this is the main issue. And uh, can you use big data technology for this? 
Can you browse existing documentation uh, bases instead of asking people to fill new databases? So this is essentially uh, the motivation. So let me discuss what we are currently uh, developing for uh, competency uh, warehouse, and it is shown here. So I'm describing the workflow of uh, this service. So uh, the entry point, so uh, the idea is that we want to get the information about competencies, individual competencies of people, that's what I have in mind. Uh, just, uh, I mean, competencies of the lab is something that uh, is uh, somehow classical through keywords. I mean, for instance, the uh, UEB, which is the Federation of uh, Universities in Brittany, has such a competency portal, but it has been, it is based on a fixed and predefined uh, set of uh, keywords, and this is uh, not very appropriate and difficult to maintain, so costly to maintain, so we want to do something different. So we think that there is a living database of document, which is all the document that the scientists produce, and I mean it's one of the main activity to produce documents. Publication is one of them. And uh, there are existing database. I mean, for computer scientists, uh, this one is a reference international database. Uh, you have the French database for all disciplines. And uh, there are also uh, web portals uh, providing uh, uh, search uh, services uh, for science, etc. And the idea is that you reuse these existing uh, s uh, database of uh, scientific uh, documents to uh, extract the uh, title of uh, publication. Uh, for instance, as an item, you know that for a given scientist, we can get his list of publication. From this, we can extract the title, Google it, and select uh, the first answers in terms of PDF to get a PDF either of the publication of some preprint related to the publication. We don't need exactly the publication. We decompile it to an XML uh, document and this way, or maybe in a more direct way, depending on how what kind of information in, is in those databases, we can get an XML database of a scientific document for the set of researchers uh, in the Excellence Center. So I will tell you, uh, we've been doing this, and I will tell you a few words about that. Once we have this, then we can proceed in doing the following. We can query this database uh, through text. So this idea is not, to, not just to query it using a list of keywords, as you would do by uh, querying with Google, but to use more intelligent uh, correlation, text correlation tools, and submit to them, for instance, the description of a domain of interest for you described through uh, an article or through the abstract of an article. So it's a full text that we would submit as a query. Uh, for the moment, we have been uh, trying an open source and, uh, I mean, well-established uh, tool for doing this correlation. And we have also been experimenting something that is, uh, I mean, a research tool at the moment. And to search for the best correlated items from which we get in term information on wh who does what on uh, which uh, topic. And uh, by this way, we plan to return, uh, uh, I mean, uh, recommendations of whom to contact. And of course, it's not, it's going some information that the uh, individual, I mean, the people who is querying the tool will have to exploit by hand. I mean, of course, there will be relevant information in it 
and junk exactly as you get when you query Google. I mean, this is the way you do it, and there will be no difference in this respect. So we have to learn what are the, the way, uh, the use case, and the way of uh, uh, calling, querying this kind of tool. Another project that we are uh, trying, this one is uh, less advanced so far, is to try to support the monitoring of activity of some research groups. For us, uh, this, it's the list of projects that we've been funding. Therefore, as part of uh, uh, giving the, the contract to them, we ask them to give us access to uh, uh, fluxes of uh, information they have, for instance, through either the monitoring or their wiki, or their flows of email. This is what we have been asking for, that they use uh, an alias for the uh, email address of the group, and that they give us access to this alias uh, uh, to monitor the mail data exchanges. So they know it, so it's not NSA type of activity. And, uh, but uh, using this, uh, browsing this email, we uh, try to classify this email in particular to uh, identify which one, uh, I mean, would announce meetings. Which this is not particularly uh, difficult. And which are the email which have as attachments slides, papers, or whatever, who are likely to be relevant to the work of the project and not talking about something else. So this is where you have to do a real uh, classification job. Because when you exchange email in a community with uh, attachments, sometimes it's to talk about what you are doing yourself, and sometimes it's to talk about what other people are doing. And we have to try to classify and see what is relevant. So the idea is to provide user feedback like you, you have in anti-spam classifiers. So typically an anti-spam classifier is proposing to you to label an email as spam or not spam, and you can correct this. So we would be using this kind of similar protocol by labeling the email and uh, giving to the people the opportunity to, to correct these labels and doing learning uh, with this. So this is now only starting. So of course, by doing this, we get a database of uh, activity through the announcement of meeting, and we, database, we get a database of ongoing uh, draft work that we can use, I mean, as a board of director, and that we can add as an additional information to the research warehouse by adding them to the uh, publication uh, database uh, to get ongoing work and not only past work. Okay, so, so these are the two main uh, trials that we are doing at the moment. And uh, now I'm telling you a bit about the difficulties uh, behind this because uh, we found some difficulties where we did not expect them. <coughs> so we thought that in some sense the tools uh, would be the main difficulty. I'm not sure at the moment that uh, this is going to be the case because the tool, uh, we are not really uh, needing a very high performance from the tool. The point is that as soon as they try to, they, as soon as they deliver relevant information, they can get, in addition, quite some junk but uh, by just having a nice um, dialogue between the user and the tool, the user will clean this information and find uh, what is of interest to him. Okay, so because it's not fully automatic, we think that uh, the performance of the tool won't be the main bottleneck. Collecting the data is in fact the major bottleneck and uh, has uh, proved to be a major difficulty. And this is why we are getting slower than we planned. So, uh, so far, uh, uh, it took us uh, almost one year to collect 
the, uh, to build the, the database of uh, the uh, publication of everyone in the LabEx. How did we do this? Uh, of course, we need to have to ask as least possible information uh, to the people, and therefore we just ask them to, of course, to register as uh, members of uh, the Excellence Center and to provide us with a link to their uh, standard uh, bibliography database. So, for instance, we ask them to give the link to HAL, to the, to the HAL uh, database. We ask them to give the link to the DBLP database, etc. So, this is uh, the information yeah, that we ask them. Uh, it took us uh, more time than expected, but uh, we finally managed to have a hit for 60% of the official uh, member of the Excellent Center. The uh, getting the uh, information flux is uh, even a more difficult uh, uh, problem, and so far we don't have a very satisfactory way at the moment to get access to the draft work that is ongoing. So this is the difficulty that we have not been able to solve so far. Uh, uh, the reason is that email may not be the vehicle for exchanging uh, this information. Many people work by using CVS, I mean, which are shareware for uh, dis distributed uh, writing of papers. And uh, you are not expecting to give access to a CVS to an external body. And so that is one of uh, our uh, main difficulties. So we still do not have a satisfactory workflow for this in terms of collecting the data. We are still in the process of developing the processing of the data, but uh, getting the data is still a difficulty at the moment. Uh, so, difficulty, as I said, is uh, uh, to be compliant with uh, uh, usage, and uh, it has been so far the access to the information and ongoing work is the more main difficulty. And I insist that we don't want the people to ask the people to put the information actively. Uh, the point is that we would like to get it on the fly while they are doing their regular work. So if you have some ideas, uh, I would be happy, of course. Uh, the, the last idea is, uh, p uh, the last difficulty is probably less uh, important, is uh, to try to develop an understanding of how should be the dialogue between the user and the tool. But uh, I think I'm less uh, uh, anxious about uh, this last item. Uh, so here is the long-term vision that uh, we hope ultimately to achieve. And uh, I think I don't need to develop this. Uh, I'm probably already a bit late. OK, so that's it. Thank you. I propose you is uh, uh, to ask questions if you have any questions during the debate. We are going to have uh, Jacques Francois Marchandu who is going to, to, to do a, a debate. Oh, meanwhile, yeah. Ah, yes, of course. Sorry. I'm a bad host. <laughs> Thank you for your, your talk. Um, uh, concerning your first uh, functionality about uh, uh, parsing database of uh, bibliographical database. Uh, is it not uh, things like easy web of knowledge or easy web of science, for example? Like, because this, this task is something that, uh, for example, easy web of uh, knowledge made to, to, to have common platform with uh, bibliographic knowledge. Is, is this uh, not a concurrent uh, initiative uh, with it's easy or other? Uh, 
I'm happy to talk to you about this because I am not uh, fully aware of what you mentioned. Uh, I, I know that there are lots of uh, research uh, social networks in the research community. I mean, I mentioned ResearchGate, who are obviously making some correlation between uh, between uh, publications uh, that they consider to be on a related topic. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know exactly so far how to turn those uh, existing services into what would be needed when you want to understand who does what on what. I'm not sure how to use ResearchGate for that. Uh, it's not clear to me. Uh, um, I will really need something where I can give a thorough description, not just keywords, because keywords are very superficial. So you want to submit uh, a text that is deep and detailed enough to vehicle uh, information at uh, various levels and uh, to benefit from a tool who is going beyond simply keyword matching. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, whether this uh, exists, but uh, I'd be happy to hear about uh, what you mentioned. So I'm happy that we can discuss this. Uh, maybe William, you know this? Uh, if, uh, this uh, William, do you know the, the No, okay, so I'm happy to hear you about this. Thank you very much. As a researcher, I really have a dream that not to have to never have to write any report. <laughs> so I hope you will success for that. So just a question: Did, Do you try to make uh, available a, a tools for collaborating writing things, uh, just to uh, to replace uh, the CVS uh, no. standard? No. Uh, okay. So the idea is that uh, each time we want to put something on the platform. We ask ourselves, what are the people doing at the moment? And is there any reason for them to change what they are doing at the moment? OK? Because of course, you could, uh, so to say, ask the people or force the people to, uh, to use what you are proposing as part of being member of the lab. But that's certainly not what you, we want to do. And uh, we have been discussing that the, the tools that the people are using, I never heard complaints about them. So I don't see any reason for uh, forcing the people to move to other tools, uh, to tools other than what they are doing. And uh, collaborative writing is, uh, I think, widely, uh, widely used. So uh, we didn't consider including this. We, ha we offer a, a wiki, of course. But okay. uh, that's not much. Okay, we don't have a real CVS, etc. I think it's uh, it's of a little use. I mean, in this case, uh, what you could consider doing is uh, perhaps have a loose coupling with uh, external platforms for this. But uh, I'm not even sure that. Yeah, it I was not saying doing new tools, but maybe some links. And I say offering, not uh, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And I just maybe to add some new services, for so example, fixing. I mean, so on. As you have seen, the team is not large, yeah. and therefore we have priorities. And this is not. I one understand of what the I said. It's very easy to say and difficult to yeah. to, to set up. 